Hi everyone, I thought I would do something just a little bit different for today's video. And I'm going to start with telling you about this painting just very briefly and how this very much represents the type of subject I love to paint and draw. And then I'm going to take you through the process that I go through to explore a new medium and also new subjects and new styles and how that influences my uh, creativity and sort of my artistic progression really. So this is a painting of a belted Galloway cow. It's been created with conventional acrylic and then interactive acrylic on top. And as you would expect, this, the paint in this particular painting was applied with a brush. And I actually created this picture during a live demonstration for Exeter Art Society uh, a few months ago. And the demo went well, and I love painting this kind of subject. Uh, there's a lot of texture, a lot of colour, even though this is not conventionally a black and white animal, you can see I've hardly used any white and certainly no black. And so this is very much in keeping with my general artistic style. But once in a while I like to deviate from that main direction and try out a new material. So one of the things I've been trying out recently are the Liquitex acrylic paint markers. Now these are marker pens, but they're full of acrylic paint and they have a, well the ones I like to use have a 15 millimeter wide nib. But you can use the edge of the nib and diff the nib at different angles to get a lot of different brush-like effects. So what I thought I would do to explore these marker pens is I thought I would choose two colors that I don't use all that often and I certainly don't use them in combination typically. So the first one is the iridescent antique gold and then the other one is a colour that I regularly use, but not normally in its pure form in such quantity, and that's cadmium red. And I thought, well, what I'm going to do to find out how well these markers work and how they can influence my style and my art is I'm going to try a lot of quick sketches. I'm going to use just these two colours and I'm going to explore a range of different subjects. And that's what I'm going to take you through now. So the first of these experiments was this painting here. And this was inspired by the TV show Strictly Come Dancing, which I think in America is called Dancing with the Stars. So it's essentially a ballroom dancing competition involving celebrities and it's televised. Anyway, so as you can see, what I've done here is I've used the gold marker to very, very loosely just indicate the bulk of the forms of the dancing couples. And those lines have been kept incredibly loose. And then on top of that, I've gone over with some quick gestural lines in the cadmium red to further define the outlines of the dancing couples. And then to finish off, I just used the, the very edge of the nib to put in a little uh, borderline for the dance floor. And then I decided to put in some uh, vertical red lines here. And you can see the lovely marks you can get with the drying nib. So it kind of gives you a dry brush effect. So not my most precise drawing, but a nice sense of movement and a good first experiment. Having done that, I kept going with the dancing theme. And I did this study of two dancers, another dancing couple, this time with a 1950s vintage rock and roll style. So you can see we've got two, uh, two people jiving away here, holding hands. Again, I've gone mostly with the gold, but a few highlights on the, on the red of the saddle shoes and a few swishes on the poodle skirt, the guy's collar, and then just kind of creating a sense of movement. So at the moment, really, I'm kind of just drawing and using these marker pens and, and experimenting with the dry brush effects that you can get, even though it's actually a pen you're using. Here's the final dance experiment I did. So with this one, there's a bit more action, a bit more sense of momentum. Again, we've got a couple holding hands, and I can't remember whether this was a tango or a jive, but you can see the weight of this woman is really being thrown back and she's anchored very much by hanging on to her partner's hand and he's leaning back to counter her weight. Again, little definition, but just trying to capture the movement of those lines. Up here, you can see I've done some experiments with the, the gold and the red just to kind of get used to these pens. OK, completely different subject this time. So this still life study was inspired by some plants in our garden, in our back garden. And again, I've used the gold to block in the main forms. And once again, just picked out the red for some shadow regions 
or perhaps just the edges of the petals. But I'm starting to learn more and more about how these markers work and how I can use them to depict different things. Now this is one of my favourite views in the centre of Exeter because for me it really sums up the city. Uh, for those of you who haven't been there, Exeter is a relatively small city in the southwest of England. I guess the population is around about 120,000 people. And although this, there are a lot of buildings, obviously in roads, as you would expect in Exeter, one of the great joys of living here is the, that you are so close to the countryside and coast. So this one was actually inspired by the view from the top of a city centre car park. And you can see this wonderful church and then in the background the rolling Devon hills and hedges. And now this is starting to sort of teach me how I can use these two colours in combination to create a sense of distance. So following on from the dancing pictures, I've once again used the gold to very loosely delineate the distant tree lines and hedges and also create the, uh, the forms of the church with its tall tower and spire and then the lower level buildings as well. Having done that, I've used the cadmium red to block in this rooftop, which is right in the foreground, pick out some lines of the windows and the other details within the church, and then deliberately left the background stuff untouched. And of course, using warm colours like cadmium red is a well-established technique to make things come to the fore, and using fainter colours to push them back into the distance is also well-established. So I'm not really doing anything new here, but the colour combination is new to me. So I like the kind of antique gold because it really does give the, the church a sense of age and a, a sense of history. But again, one of my favourite views of Exeter, so that was a good fun one to do. Now this one is a depiction of the Headland Hotel down at Fistral Beach in Cornwall. Fistral Beach, a wonderful location, internationally re renowned surf venue. Uh, a really fantastic place to visit if you're into surfing or just walking along the beach. Really, really, really good. And the Headland Hotel is equally good. It's a really beautiful hotel, prime location, great food. So this one, the antique gold was used again to block in and draw out the general landscape. And then I just used a few lines of red to indicate the waves lapping in on this little cove here. Fistral Beach is actually just over this bit of land here. This is sort of Fistral Beach going off into the distance. So again, I'm experimenting with this red in the foreground, gold in the background, but I really like the way the dry brush effects of the antique gold, it almost creates a sense of sea mist because the hotel is kind of obscured. And these experiments don't take too long, but it's great fun to do, and it's great fun to explore and find these new techniques. So, of course, at some point I had to do a cow in this little mix of drawings. So this cow was a cow uh, in a field in Dorset. And again, I've used more or less the same technique. This is a grazing Frisian cow. I've used the gold to block in again and then used the red to pick out key points in the foliage and uh, on the cow to describe the form. And you can see by doing that, it very much keeps your eye focused on the animal and you'll, you tend not to notice this background stuff. But the background stuff does place the animal in its environment. Now this one is a drawing of some village ruins at a village called Tynham in Dorset. And there's quite an interesting story to this. The, the village was actually uh, commandeered or claimed, if you like, by the British government during the Second World War uh, for testing and for kind of, you know, trying out operations. And at the end of the war, they never gave it back. So it currently resides within a sort of military compound that the public have access to. And it's become a tourist attraction because it acts as a time capsule of a bygone era. Um, but in terms of the drawing, I've used more or less the same technique. But now I'm starting to use the, uh, the red to indicate shadow areas more. So you can see I've done that on the ruins of these cottage walls here. And this tree, which is creeping in from above, I wouldn't say this is my favourite drawing, but I do like the way the cadmium red overlaid on the antique gold. I like the kind of impression of shadow that gives on the foliage. Now, if you then leave the village. Actually, I take that back. If you, well, no, if you leave the village, that, I am correct. If you leave the village and go up high onto the hills behind it, 
then you get to this wonderful viewing point of the Dorset coast. And as you can see, this is a very simple depiction of a landscape. Again, I'm using a simple horizon line of the sea with the gold, very light dry brush to indicate a distant headland, bolder marks but still impressionist to indicate the nearer hedges and the lines of the hills, and then as I come into the foreground I'm putting red over the gold again. And now I, really, I feel this, although it's a simple drawing, it's impressionistic, there's not much detail, I do feel I've captured a real sense of atmosphere and distance in this, which is, you know, captures the emotion I felt when I was on top of this hill looking out to sea. Now this is one of my favourite memories. Uh, beyond Tynan Village, if you walk for 20 minutes towards the South Dorset coast, you come across this hidden secret beach called Warborough Bay. And it really is a magical place. You've got really high cliffs of the Jurassic coast in the background. You've got this sweeping cove in this wonderful U shape. Although I haven't drawn it, the beach itself is pebble and it's really, really steep as it approaches the water, maybe 45 degrees. So this crystal clear blue water crashes in on the pebbles, drags them back down into the water with each receding wave with incredible, this incredible sound. And if you go bathing, as we did on this day, it's actually a struggle to get out of the water because the waves are kind of pulling you down. The pebbles are sliding down as you try to walk up them. So it's, it's quite an adventure. But again, you can see I'm using this gold for the distance and the red to create a sense of foreground. Now, if you look in the other direction from the same beach, you get this view. And here I feel I'm really starting to come to grips with this technique. Again, I'm persisting with the gold and red combination. But here I feel I've really created a sense of distance for this hill, this coastal hill with the dry brush effect of the gold. For the foreground shadows in the landscape, I've put the, the gold down much, much thicker. And that creates this sort of kind of weird gold grey, depending on how it catches the light. It makes for a really interesting image and gives the impression that light is truly cascading over the landscape. I've just put a few lines in here to indicate the water. And then once again, I've used the red to pick out some detail in the foreground. But this is one of my favourites in the little experiment so far. So I've called this the red and gold experiment, which is, you know, R-A-G-E, rage for short, just my little shorthand uh, so that I can kind of keep track of what I'm doing. Now, a different part of the British coast. This view was inspired by a trip down to Exmouth in Devon, uh, not too far from Exeter, actually, and a very different coast. So this is uh, the beach here down below this line. And then we've got the mouth of the River X. And if you kept going left, that runs into the English Channel. Just across the water, again, you've got the distant rolling hills that are characteristic of Devon. And Exmouth often has wonderful skies. The, the clouds are changing shape and colour and formation by the minute. So I've kind of depicted some of that movement again with the gold. And it's a huge uh, water sports area. It's very popular for kite surfers and windsurfers, Exmouth. Uh, today we've got a catamaran on the water depicted in red, a little red flag. And then we've got a family carrying some equipment down to the beach. And you can see that I've picked out this little dinghy and the catamaran in red, also the flag and the people in the foreground. And that creates this nice V shape. So I feel it really leads your eye this way and this way and then off into the distance of the painting. One of the things I hope to do as the weather gets better this year is to go outside more and paint more outside, get out of the studio more. And I'm hoping that these markers are going to allow me to do that because it's less equipment to carry, it's lighter, and you can work so quickly yet attain the effects that you would normally get with a brush. So here is one of those first experiments. So this is the kind of way I'm thinking at the moment. What I plan on doing is depicting a landscape outside really quickly using the markers. So here I've drawn in the hills. I've started to indicate the sky and the trees and this building and some sheep in the foreground. This little guy in the background has become a bit mutated. The, the shape of the head is somewhat wrong, but I can correct that later in the creation of the picture. And I'm, you know, putting down sort of uh, little sort of diary notes, really visual, a visual diary notes on texture and colour. And then 
After I've done this stage, what I plan to do is use brushes in my normal way, using the interactive acrylic, to quickly blend and colour and add further tone and detail to create a finished painting. But we'll see how that goes. That's my plan for the summer anyway. OK, that's pretty much it for this video. So I hope you enjoyed listening to my thoughts and hearing how I go about experimenting with different techniques and how they lead to the next step in my artistic progression. Thanks again for watching. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to ask. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks again.